Greetings and welcome to uh, this week's edition of the Washington Demon Coaches Show, a uh, name that has been much maligned and will apparently live forever. Uh, but please keep your uh, ideas for a new name uh, coming. Uh, uh, anything we can do different than Washington Demon Coaches Show, I would appreciate. Um, I'm your friendly neighborhood h host, uh, Todd Patterson. Uh, I'm here with my producer, Nick Steffens, and we are powered by KCTC. Um, I'm happy today to be joined in the studio by four uh, really cool guests. Uh, Brent and Van Weldon, who uh, apparently going to be here every year, Brent, or every week. Brent, I'm excited about that. There's, uh, <laughs> I can I can see that. <laughs> Fired up. I'm also joined uh, by the one and only uh, Mr. Don Hughes today, who's going to give us an overview of. Um, of our band, our marching band, and talk a little bit about uh, competitive band and some of the things that he's got going there. We're also joined with uh, with Mr. Hughes, are his two drum majors, Bailey Reese and Kale Malishki. Don't know how to spell the uh, latter's last name, but I'm sure he can help us with that. <laughs> so uh, Brent, uh, thanks for uh, being here again yeah. today. You want to give us a little overview quick of this past week's activities, maybe touch on the CCA game, some of the things that are happening with cross country? Yeah, there's a lot going on, obviously. Uh, things are going to get busier next week, but uh, just thinking back about uh, uh, volleyball. Volleyball had another close match against Mount Pleasant. Uh, lost in five sets again. In talking with Coach Six, they, they lost – their last three matches in five sets, so they're right there. Um, this past week, they against Mount Pleasant, they actually lost the first two, then won the second two, and then lost the third third one, uh, fifteen to thirteen. So it was real close. Um, so, so they're right there. Um, uh, they play, gosh, next week I believe they play Fort Madison on Tuesday. So you know things are things are going well there. Cross country had a great week last week. Um, down in uh, uh, Fairfield, I believe the boys were first and the girls were second. Um, they actually run ten tonight. I believe it's tonight, right? Is it tonight at Fort Madison? Um, so we're, we're looking for great things there. Um, both really strong teams uh, continuing to do things. Our, our middle school got rolling with uh, volleyball this week. They, they both won against Mount Pleasant. Our middle school football team, uh, went to West Burlington, the eighth grade one handily, and then the seventh grade team tied. And, um, they must not break ties or something. And I feel like the football. NFL these days. So, yeah, but things are going well. Probably for you, uh, one of the one of the things you asked me was about high school baseball uh, this year. Uh, for for all the fans out there, big news that the the board voted last night to purchase the the right field fence. So for the next two years, we are going to have home baseball games, hey, all right. um, which, will, which will be big for the seniors this year and obviously the juniors next year. So that's big news. And, you know, obviously thank the board and Mr. Stone for putting the money out there to, to make sure our, our students uh, have home games. So are you guys going to have here's what I would suggest is having a contest to name the fence we yeah. talked like you can't have the green monster right we talked a little bit about the black netting yeah which didn't seem very catchy either it's a little bit like the name of this show right? we can't <laughs> quite figure it out so yeah i don't know i think that'd be a good idea some yeah. write-in votes for the name of the right field fence right field fence so yeah it's going to be about a 20-foot fence um it's a movable fence so it will be a lot shallower this year and next year than it will be once the the new addition is done to the high school then uh, the poles will be in sleeves, and then we'll be able to move it back. Um, so that's great news for the that's baseball really team. News, yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome that they get to play at home. I heard they might get new pants again this year, so that's also very exciting. Yeah, they're, I think they're looking at pinstripes. So It's very slimming. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, I could stand to wear pinstripes yeah, more no, often. They, they, I think they're you don't want the horizontal cool. ones. No, those, they're the those other way. way. Okay. Well, I don't know. I guess I'd assume they went vertical. All right. So... Uh, Huge week this week for the school. So you've got um, homecoming right. uh, starting. I don't know when festivities start, but it start this weekend, really, sort of after the game, or does it start Monday in earnest? And and then you, well, you know you've got a lot of things going on. So you want to talk a little bit? Yeah, about we, we do. We do have a lot going on. Um, well, again, last night at the board meeting, the uh, board approved that Powder Puff can come back. So. I guess in the in, with the kids, the students, powder puffs back. So 
Um, How does that work? So that's the girls are playing football against each other, and you got yeah. some of the guys coaching. The them guys or? will coach it. The seniors will play the freshmen, and then the sophomores will play the juniors at the same time. And then they uh, the two winners will play each other for the championship. So that starts Sunday. They actually practice on Sunday and Monday, and then they play on Wednesday. So that, that there's a lot going on. So it, uh, the homecoming festivities, I guess. For the students, we'll start Sunday night at 7 when they can practice for Powder Puff. Um, then, you know, all throughout the week, uh, we have home football, JV football on Monday. We have home volleyball on Tuesday. We have the Powder Puff on Wednesday, Spirit Night on Thursday, the football game on Friday, and then the dance on Saturday and throw in float building. Mm -hmm. um, we have activities going on during fifth block. Um, there's just a lot of moving parts. We obviously have the king and queen coronations going on at Spirit Night. Um, cross country, uh, they have a meet next week. So there's a lot of home away, home and away events. Um, so it'll be busy. It'll be packed in there for. We'll see if we can get everything done. It's it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a, a busy week. Well, I'll tell you, and I don't want to spoil it, but you're going to want to look for the Washington County Hospital and Clinic's float in the homecoming parade. It's going to have some special items in it this year, and I'm pretty excited about it. I'm glad you brought the parade up. If anybody else out there wants to be in the parade, it's a very simple process. Um, down on the corner, the what would be the southwest corner of the school by the cemetery, if you want to have uh, entering the parade, all you have to do is show up. Uh, just show up. We'll get you in the line and and uh, you can be in the parade. What I do ask, though, however, is do not pull into the school parking lot. Uh, if you have a float or an entry in the parade, don't pull into the school parking lot. It creates a disaster when the students are trying to leave at uh, 120. Gotcha. But it sounds like it's a very exclusive group in the parade. Just <laughs> show up and you're in. Yes, if you have show a up pulse. and you're in. Yes, if you want in the parade, show up. So, <laughs> and we usually have a lot of entries. It's always a pretty cool parade. So, so who's, uh, who's on the homecoming court this year? Yeah, uh, uh, we have six king candidates and uh, six queen candidates. The way we do that is the, the seniors uh, vote on their classmates uh, for the top six. And then uh, out of those six, uh, we have the entire student body get a vote on who they would want to be king and queen. But this year we have Levi Applegate, Keaton Crawford, Kevin Flannery, Drew Horak, Ethan Patterson, and Cameron Von Pena as our king candidates. And for Queen, Peyton Anderson, McKenna Conrad, Alicia Goff, Tegan Sulentik, Grace Voss, and Haley Mitchell. So awesome. great kids, all great kids. Well, I wish, I wish all of them the best of luck in their uh, respective uh, races. I don't know what you would call um, that. I wasn't anywhere near the homecoming court in my day, so I don't really know what you call it. I, I got voted best smile. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> you know, interestingly enough, I was voted most likely to succeed, and I, I can't figure that one out either. Well, that's not, not wrong. You know, not wrong. I got voted a couple other things, too. I prefer yeah. not to mention. Right. Let's keep it. Let's keep it PG. All right. All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead, and thanks for being here, Brent. I think we're going to go ahead and cut to commercial. When we come back, we'll uh, have uh, Mr. Don Hughes, Bailey Reese, and uh, Cade Malishki. Kale Malishki. I thought I'd have trouble with that. Hey, welcome back to the Washington Demons uh, Coaches Show. Uh, if, again, if you have any thoughts about that particular name, we'd love to hear them. I'm very happy to be joined in the studio now by the one and only Mr. Don Hughes. If you don't know who Don Hughes is, you probably are not familiar with Washington in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> uh, I'm also joined by his two, two uh, drum majors, uh, Bailey Reese and Kale, don't call me Cade Malishki. Uh, so uh, welcome, guys. I really appreciate you being here today. And um, 
Don, why don't you start a little bit about, uh, give us a little bit oversight about the sort of band uh, season, the competition season, how things are going, where you've been recently, and where you're looking to go here in the next little bit. Okay, so um, the band season is split between home games and community performances and competitions. Um, We do every home game, which is usually four to five. Um, Competition-wise, we are set up for five. Our... uh, First competition is this weekend. We're heading to Mount Pleasant. Um, pretty big competition. We'll see a lot of bands there. So, so with, with your competitions, do you guys travel? Is it mostly within our conference, or do you travel further than that? Um, we do see some people from outside. We do uh, our second um, performance is at Davis County. Um, we see a band from Missouri that comes up there. Um, Muscatine, I think we've had people come from Cross from Illinois before. Okay. And it's it's not some people travel quite a ways. Okay. And so um th- that was your next how how did you guys do in your last competition, for instance? We haven't had one yet. You, so this is your first one right. coming up. Okay. The, this Muscatine show is a really early season show. Okay. Um so early that they don't impose any kind of penalties. Um there's no timing penalties. They really it's just kind of do what you have of your show. Okay. And they judge. Um, there was a year a Cedar Rapids band came down. They performed their opener, and they left. Okay. So they did like a four-minute show, and they were gone. Okay. So for for the lay person who doesn't really know much about marching band like Mr. Van Welden, I, of course, know it inside and out. Can you give us a little overview about how a competition band works and, like, you know, what's the goal? How How is it scored? How do you – how do you – know if you win or (laughs) not sure um the competition marching band is based on on drum and bugle corps um the idea is to work on one show throughout the season cleaning it and cleaning it and working uh making some changes there are six judges it's a it ends up being a hundred point score but there are six judges three in the press box three on the field also called adjudicators brent yes I don't know why I'm getting picked. I know. Well, <laughs> the three on the field. There's no one else here. The three on the field are uh, marching execution, music execution, and the percussion judge. And those three judges are looking at the individual performances. Okay. The three in the press box are the um, marching general effect, music general effect, and the color guard. And they're watching how the whole show develops and works out. Okay. Um. So even though it's a hundred point score, it's based on a thousand points. So the music and marching judges, each of them has a two hundred point ballot. Okay. Percussion and color guard have a one hundred point. Once it's pushed all together, they uh, slide the decimal point. You get a score from one. I was going to say they just add it up. Yeah, they yeah. just add it up, move the decimal point, and you get a score from one to a hundred. Okay, gotcha. Right. Um, at the Mount Pleasant, there will not be a color guard or percussion judge on the ballot so that's a, only an 80 point show okay slightly different all right well that's i learned something new there that's you know um can you tell me so every year you guys have a theme or a motif that you kind of go after so this year you can tell me a little bit about kind of the theme that you guys are going after and how that informs the music you select and also or maybe it's the music that's informs the theme i don't know in this case it's music that music first a lot of years we've done a sort of a storytelling aspect and then we've kind of picked the music around that this year we're doing a a show called spanish dances um and it's it's all latin jazz it's all feel good latin jazz it's a lot of fun to play i do actually like that quite a bit yeah so how about uh like uh costumes you guys have uh we do change our we we keep our uniform the same, but we do change our color guard costumes every year. This year, the uh, ladies are in black dresses with red accents, and we have one male member who is dressed all in black. We did get the little red flares on his pant cuffs. <laughs> but So do you, do you have a uh, uh, flag core too? Yeah, that's the color guard. That's the color guard. Yep. Okay. There's, we have six members. That's, you see where I'm coming from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, we're normally it's it's all a flag routine. Our second tune it's a short one, and we're going with with fans. Okay, so we've got multicolored fans out there and getting okay. some dance moves going. 
So you'll be um, you'll be at home uh, a week from tomorrow. Yep, we'll be for our for our game, and then yep. your Mount Pleasant one is what was the date? Mount Pleasant is this Saturday. This, so day after tomorrow. Yep, and we step off at eight fifteen. Okay. How do you guys, do you guys, are they pretty well attended? I imagine they will Yes, be. yeah, yeah. The Mount Pleasant show is really, really big. How, how long do they take typically? Um, I think the first so band steps meet? off around like 5.30. Okay. And usually awards are somewhere around 10, 10, 15. Okay. It's, there's quite a few in each class okay. for this one. Um, the Davis County show is smaller, but that one I think is still running from like 6.30 to 10. Okay. Each band gets 15 minutes from entry to exit, and then there's about a five-minute dead time in between, and on with the next. Okay. Well, I wanted to shift a little bit to your uh, excellent drum majors here. Bailey, I know, and Kale, I've just met and can't get his name right, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Bailey, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, what interests you about, you know, um, uh, com- competition band and also what does a drum major do? <laughs> well, um, about myself, I uh, am involved in a lot of things in this area, music. I do a little theater and choir. I am super passionate about marching band overall, uh, just because it kind of encompasses the idea that everyone's important. And there's no bench in marching band. Everybody has to be there. And otherwise, we leave like holes in our pictures on the everybody field. Everybody has to pull their weight. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah. And it's kind of set an expectation like our band members are pretty self-efficient like they work hard because it will help everybody around them which is really really nice especially this year so i'm really proud of everybody um drum major my job and kale's job is to lead rehearsals when uh, mr hughes goes to work with the guard and we just kind of we're that liaison between the band members and the band director, which helps with some, any issues that could arise, anything and, like that. And so do you play an instrument as well? No. Both of us are going to be seen on podiums and ladders that we are conducting the band the entire time. We are doing our performances. I mean, in your personal spare time, do you play an instrument? Yes, I do. I do play clarinet. Uh, I'm actually auditioning for Allstate this year. Oh, very nice. Which I'm excited for. So, just a question. How come your podium is so much taller than um, <laughs> Kale's podium? Um, so, it's kind of a rite of passage. I am <laughs> <laughs> I am a senior, and th- that means that's my second year being drum major, and it's Kale's first year. So, you He's were on learning. the short podium last year. Is that pretty yes. much what it is? Yeah. And so I had to run a lot around the field last year. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I had to move around to where the band could see me Oh, the best. gotcha. I had a number of times where the band was facing backfield, so she had oh, to make the run to the backfield ladder. I thought maybe you were being punished for no, something. No, nope. Yeah, uh, no, nope. wouldn't have surprised me. <laughs> okay, why don't, you, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sounds like you're involved in some other activities, too, maybe including cross-country, but maybe you can talk a little bit about yourself, about that. What interests you about competition band, and what do you like about being a drum major also? Yeah, um, I'm involved in cross-country and track. Yeah. Uh, where boys are ranked state... State ranks 13th and girls are 14th, which is pretty cool. Um, the thing I like about competition band is when you're like at a competition, you can see how differently everyone else does it, how different the drum majors are, what they do, and like how different the color guards are. Like huh. there'll be like a wide variety of color guards. There'll be like 40 color guards, and we have six. It's just a really <laughs> interesting thing to see. Yeah, it's just a lot of hard work that everyone puts in. So, so like, talk about a little bit about that. When do you guys practice, and you know, how long do you spend on this? When do you start practice and things? Uh, we start in the summer. We do about two weeks of camp, which is pretty much just like a all day thing for two weeks. Everyone hates it. It's really hot. <laughs> it's really hot. It's a lot of work. You're, you're going to end up with a really small podium, I think, if you're not careful. <laughs> 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 everyone it's uniform everyone hates it's, it it's that 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 uh <laughs> that group trauma that brings us together <laughs> yes i got you it's a bonding experience yeah. <laughs> it's like boot camp yeah. uh-huh and then during school season uh we start at seven twenty in the morning and we have a few eighth graders that are part of it and they leave at eight o'clock to go to back to the middle school and then the rest of us will stay to about eight forty. 
Great. So I have a cross country question for you. Um, when you're running, do you ever look for holes and things to step in to pretend like you've broken something so you can stop running immediately? All the time. Yes. Okay. The, I was wondering if that was also a universal feeling because I recall that one too. At the first meet this year at Anamosa, my legs were dead and I just kept looking around for kids with spikes on. I wanted to get in front so of them you, and yeah, just let so them you get spiked. The yes. So I could stop. Yes. That's how. <laughs> That's how enjoyable cross country boots are. <laughs> it's, it gets better <laughs> sometimes. So, um, you know, um, Mr. Hughes is talking about Spanish dances as as the theme this year. Are there any? Um, well, first of all, why don't you talk a little bit about the sections of the band, and then maybe you could talk about if there's any of those that are more prominently featured in this particular theme and and how you kind of approach that. Yeah. Um, so we have three movements, which is Estancia, Millennia, and Santana. Uh, and within those three movements, we do have some soloists that I do want to shout out to. We have a color guard soloist with her little dance, Megan Kitchen, uh, in the final movement. And then we also have two other soloists, Charlotte Windmill on trumpet. And on trombone, we have Claire Wobina that kind of has little desk hints that they throw in there with nice. everybody else. Uh, sections, it's a big percussion piece i yeah i've I heard some complaints <laughs> about the percussionists being like we don't know it we don't know it what do you want us to do <laughs> learn it please <laughs> but yeah. usually percussionists just get uh, complaints about noise that's been my experience well, that too quite now, often they've gotten a lot better through this so very good okay so um anything else you want to add about competition band um, Kale? I guess it's fun to encourage everybody in other schools. Not much. What's your, so what's your favorite part of competition, Ben? Um, my favorite part is looking at all the kids who don't know their music and just seeing the worry set into their face. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you feel too, Mr. Hughes? I'm just curious. Usually it's a, I look at those kids and watch the worry set into my face. <laughs> um... <laughs> The, th the cool thing about this is this is a, I mean, it's, it, you can actually see it even more so than the concert setting of everything coming together, everything improving, and, and arriving at that as close to perfection as we can get it. Yeah. And that's a, that's so by the end of the year, you kind of have reached that pinnacle where Our goal is to, to yeah. get there by our last competition. It's the third week of. October, I can't even think dates now. 15th? Do, do you have like a state equivalent? That is. That that's, is it's the IHSMA State Festival. And that one's not necessarily a competition as much as a, it's a ranked festival. We go in there for a rating, a one, two, three, okay. one being the best. And that's what really everybody's going for. Um, there's a minimum score, I think, it's somewhere around 70. Okay. Um, and you, if you hit that or higher... You get your Division One rating, Got ya. and we've been pretty pretty good at staying in that. We've had a couple of couple of years that we haven't haven't arrived at that goal in the time that I've been here, but we're pretty pretty consistent about getting in there, and that's that's our goal. So my wife was a drum major. Yes, she I've tells heard. me you've heard from her or from yeah, me. Yes, from her. Oh, go on though. I want to know what a suicide line is. <laughs> oh, we did one of those last year. We did. So, um, usually done with trombones, you know, like the long instruments. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so it's a line of them. And I think it was posted on the Facebook page for the Demon Marching Band. But it's every other trombonist has like their trombone up and then they will move it to the side. And then forward again, and then down, and then forward, and then gotcha. to the side, and they go back and forth. So it basically looks like whenever you go down, someone's trombone is Goes going over, over your head, head, and then you have to like snap up at the same time. So it's kind of a strategic, impressive looking. If your timing's thing. off. You somebody's gonna somebody get yeah, yeah, someone's gonna get hurt. Break <laughs> broken trombone slide. She also told me that it's dangerous to wear, or it's very, um, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of courage in wearing stripes on your. Pants. That's true. That's true. Um, stripe will definitely show if you're out of step. 
Yeah. It's it's very hard to mask. <laughs> do you guys have stripes? We no. do not. <laughs> no, we do not. Um, not quite that brave. But we do. We are pretty good marchers. So. Gotcha. Well, that was about all she shared with me about marching man, so I thought I'd ask. So, Bailey, future plans. You're a senior. You know what you're doing yet? Anything related to band, music, theater? Um. Not looking for a music major. Uh, I do have interest in continuing uh, ensembles and things like that when I am in college. I plan on going to Drake University. Ah. Uh, I'm not totally set on that, but it's what I'm looking at right now. Um, That's a great place. Yeah, I enjoy it. My mom went there, so I get the legacy scholarship, too. Oh, nice. <laughs> this is Drake Community College? No. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Kale, any thoughts for you? You're only a junior, so probably a little far off, but uh, you know what you're going to do yet? I'm very interested in piloting, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a very expensive schooling, so we'll see how that goes. So meaning, um, like, you want to be a commercial airline pilot, or you want to be in the Air Force, or? Uh, commercial is what I would go for, but it's very cool. challenging to get there. Yeah. Very cool. Well, anything else you want me to add, Nick? Right. I want to thank all my guests for being here. Brent Van Weldon, Don Hughes, uh, Bailey Reese, and Kale Malichke. Malichke, yeah. Malichke. Sorry, Cade. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you for joining us, uh, all of us here at Washington Demon Coaches Show. Again, if you have a better name for us, we'll be happy to take a look. So uh, over and out. Have a great day. <laughs>